Welcome to the Top Advisor Marketing Podcast brought to you by Proudmouth. I'm your host, Matt Halloran. Being your own loud is not new to marketing, but the mindset, strategies, and resources to help you get there are evolving faster than this industry is keeping up. It is time to find a new perspective on what works why and how to move your business forward. Listen as I interview guests to help you learn from them how to be your own loud. Let's get to the show. Hello and welcome to another Top Advisor Marketing Podcast. I'm your host, Matt Halloran. Now, many of you have maybe heard some buzz, Uh, maybe, maybe not, but the buzz is really, really important because of what Proudmouth is about to do. We are entering into a strategic relationship with with FICOM, and we're going to talk to Candace today a little bit about that. But I want to just highlight a little bit about what FICOM is and who they are. Uh, if you don't know who they are, I don't know what rock you've been living under because they're everywhere. Uh, they did the podcast awards. They won a bunch of awards for podcasting and their social media stuff. They're one of the greatest PR places ever in financial services. Plus, they offer great coaching and great marketing. And so we're going to dive into what those things mean. This is a part one of a two-part mini series I'm going to be doing with Candace, talking about podcasting and all things that happen in your world. So Candace, welcome to the show. I'm so excited to be here. Thanks, Matt. I don't know how many people know your story. Now, I've been privy to this because we've known each other for a while, but I'd like for you to tell everybody just a little bit about your journey to to FICOM, and then we'll talk about FICOM. Mm, so um, if you can hear a little bit of an accent, it's because I was born in Zimbabwe and I went to school in Cape Town, South Africa. So back in the day, I went to University of Cape Town. If you're American and you did a study abroad, you might have done a semester there. It's amazing how many people I run into at conferences who tell me that. So maybe you went to UCT for a semester. I studied finance and economics. And back in the day, I left university and I was like, I am not going to work in finance. It's too male dominated. It's too cutthroat. Like, I'm just not interested. And I had these grand visions. I thought for some reason I was going to work in fashion or like editorial work. And I moved to the States because my uh, parents were originally American and I was in Santa Barbara. And my sister at the time was working at Nordstrom at one of the makeup counters. And she said to me, I'd interviewed at like some really big companies like UBS and all these other firms. And they were all financial services. And I got all these jobs. And I just thought to myself at the time, I just cannot work here. I was like, my soul is going to die. And so I didn't know what I was going to do. My sister said, come work at Nordstrom. So I went to go work at Nordstrom and it was really, really fun in Santa Barbara. If you've ever been to Santa Barbara, all the staff there work in Nordstrom during the day, you go out at night downtown and you have a really fun life. It's early twenties. I know a lot of people can relate to that until one month I couldn't pay my rent. So I don't know if you know this, but at Nordstrom at the time, if anyone returned something, it actually comes out of your paycheck. So you're paid on commission. And so anyone can uh, like return anything at any time across the country. And it came out of my paycheck in one month. I didn't have enough uh, money to pay my rent. And I thought to myself, I need to get a real job and I need to get a job that's probably aligned with my undergraduate degree. Long story short, I interviewed at Mercer Advisors, which at the time their corporate headquarters was in Santa Barbara. And I interviewed with the investment department and it was a 10 person team, very diverse, very interesting. They all interviewed me young. My boss was going to be this 30 year old woman. And she was responsible for at the time, I think they were like a $5 billion trading desk. And Mercer Advisors, if you know them, they've become a big acquirer in our industry. They, at the time, focused on dentists, which was really interesting, but it was my first exposure to an RAA, and when they talked about the ethos and the vision of like helping people align their money with their values, I thought to myself, I can get behind this. Like This feels like something I could do. So even though I said I was never going to work in financial services, I really found a home and a calling in the RAA space. And at the time, I think being on a trade desk where I was young, it was diverse, I learned so much. I was licensed, I was on my way to becoming an advisor, and I got to work on a lot of cool projects like technology conversion, uh, transfer of all our assets from at the time Schwab's TD Ameritrade, and 
running the portfolio accounting desk and calculating trade errors, which no one believes that I did, but actually I quite enjoyed. And so that was my foray into the RIA space and really starting to fall in love with this idea that we could impact people's lives with their money as a vehicle. So you were there, you were happy, everything was going swimmingly. Uh, you were on track to become an advisor. What, what what changed? Well, I think a couple things changed. I don't know if it went swimmingly because it was during, you know, the market crisis when we were under our desks, like thinking like we wanted to cry. I think what really came down to it is my boyfriend at the time got a job in Orange County. And so I went to Mercer and I said, like, I think I'm going to be moving. And they said, well, there's an office down here. And I kept being offered lots of jobs on the biz dev teams of the advisors, but nothing about that job was calling to me. I kept looking at it and being like, I just, I don't really feel cold to this. I don't know what it is I feel cold to. And so the COO at the time said, go interview Candace, go interview at different firms and come back and tell us what you want to do. And I just so happened to stumble. I didn't really stumble. I went in for an interview. I walked upright into United Capital, not really knowing who they were. And I was in the HR department and she said to me, do you know that our CEO is from Zimbabwe too? And I said, no, I don't. And she said, let's go speak to him. And so we went to go speak to Joe and I got hired on the spot and I worked at United Capital and I didn't have a job description the whole time I was there. And I think what's really, really interesting is during that time, for me, quite honestly, Matt, it was a phase in my life where to your point, like I didn't, I didn't want to be an advisor, but I had my education in finance and economics. I had all my career experience in RAs, which I love the ethos and the concept, but I was feeling like I wasn't in my purpose. I wasn't in my dharma. And I was working in really um, high intensity professional environments. If anyone remembers United Capital acquired by Goldman Sachs, they were a uh, fast acquirer, really big innovator, really disruptive, really fun, but like challenging. And at the time I had, I think, a reckoning with myself, which was developed into anxiety and insomnia and panic attacks at work and like waking up in the middle of the night and feeling like I was going to die because I was feeling like really the question that came to me was like, who am I? And what is my purpose? And at that time, I didn't know. And so I was like, okay, I'm just going to work here because this is financial services. I like it. It's in my experience. And I'm going to try and figure out like what my purpose is, right? Like, what am I meant to be doing in this world? And so I embarked on a self journey, like really trying to understand who I was. It, I was meditating four times a day. I was going to acupuncture every week. I started spiritual study, like all the things that you can do. I started reading all these books by Deepak Chopra and all these things and slowly, but surely. And one of my prayers at the time was like, show me what I'm meant to be doing. Like, show me like how I'm meant to be living. And I know this happens to everyone at different stages in their life. It just so happened to me that it developed or it evolved as a career choice. Like that's the packaging it came in, right? There were lots of other things going on in my life at the time, but like that was how it, what is my purpose and what am I meant to be doing? Because it felt like I was meant to be doing more. United Capital, one of the problems I was asked to solve was we were growing so rapidly and we were acquiring so many firms that the advisors, I was the point of contact for 100 managing directors, they said, we delete the department emails, we don't know what Joe's doing, and we can't keep pace with what's happening in the company. So what the impact was, was they were feeling unaligned and then they weren't growing because they weren't adopting updates to the client experience or the investment platform or whatever that is. And at the time I reported into the head of growth and he said to me, Candace, I need you to be more visible. I need you to create culture and I need you to solve the communication problem. And I remember I went to my desk and I wrote down those three things, Matt, be more visible like solve the culture problem and create a communication thing. And I was like, oh my gosh, I mean, does he know I studied finance and economics? And long story short, I called who was my best friend at work at the time, Brandon Moss, and he was responsible for the wealth advisors and he was having the same issue. And he said, let's pair up. And at the time, this was 10 plus years ago, he said, what if we started to do video? 
So this cue-in was my soul calling and like a sign from the universe. We started shooting videos to the advisors. He would edit them on the phone. We were colloquial. We were loose. We had rap music. And what we coined was, you see news in two. So the company's news that you need to know in two minutes. And we started sending it out. Our marketing department, our CMO kept going to Joe and trying to shut us down because she said we were off brand and we were too loose, which was true. All of those things were true. Okay. But the advisors loved it. All of a sudden they were like, I know what's going on in the company. I feel connected. And a few years later, we had two professional studios. Everything that we did was via video. So it was in the show format. So I was producing all the shows as editor in chief and host. We even built at the time our own proprietary advisor video messaging tool. So I did that with the head of the platform because all the video messaging tools out there couldn't pass our security standards. And when we asked them, we even said, we'll, we'll, we'll consult for you for free to update it. They said, no, we even said, we'll buy you. They said, no. And so we built our own because our advisors said, we want to communicate with our clients and prospects, the way that you communicate, we communicate internally because the impact is we feel more connected to each other. We know what's going on, like, you know, and so we could grow rapidly and we could pivot really fast if we needed to. And so our executives would say they would walk around all of our offices and people would talk to them like they knew them. And so that was an ultimate sign of success. We were the first to go to the SEC, our compliance department, and say, how do we archive this amount of video? Like, and they said, we've never had anyone ask us that question. And so that that was my foray into what I do now, which is marketing and communications and coaching, like coaching all of those advisors to be on video, creating and using digital mediums to really create connection with people. There's so much there that that I want to unpack, but but one of the, the, the two things that I want to unpack, number one was you gave yourself permission to really truly be yourself. And then all of a sudden people felt that real connection with you. We talk about that so much on the show that it's so important to unapologetically be yourself. But two, the last part, which is the advisors, with you know, people will be walking around the office or or the executive team and the leaders and people go out in the field that I know you. Yes. Oh my God. It allows you creating great content, whether it's audio, video, blogging, whatever, makes people get a connection with you that is convenient for them on their terms. And that is so absolutely important. So so from how long were you at? How long were you there? So United Capital, I was there not even that long, five years, but five years at United Capital is like 12 years. And then they were acquired by Goldman. Yeah. And then so so now you're at FICOM and tell us what your title is and what you do here at FICOM. Yeah. So at FICOM, I have a long title. I'm EVP of our growth marketing, advisor growth marketing and our FICOM studio. So really what that falls into is two buckets. It's all I, so when I left United Capital, I actually started consulting. And one of the problems I solved was for XY Planning Network. They said, how do we scale marketing coaching? And I said, oh, well, I know a lot about scale. And I know a lot about coach. I know a lot about advisors. So let me help you. So I created their growth marketing program. And when we launched it at the time, we said, the CEO said to me, do you think this is going to work? And I said, I don't know. Let's see. And it was, we were blown away by the results, right? So I'd created this growth marketing for XYPN. And then with all my experience in video, what I'd established, I thought I would go into like video production for financial services. What I understood was advisors actually wanted to DIY their video. So I'd started coaching and building a workshop on how to do DIY video. I met uh, Meg Carpenter, who's our CEO, and I know she was one of your other podcasts. And at the time I was moving from Portland, Oregon, back to California. I'd actually broken up with my boyfriend. Of 13 years. So we were up there for Nike. I couldn't take the cold. I couldn't take the R, R again. I needed to be back in Cali. And so I was looking for a new opportunity and I met Meg and she said, why don't you bring everything that you've been doing and why don't you build it with us at FICOM and scalable? I've been wanting to do scalable advisor solutions, something she'd been dreaming of. So I run and have built our advisor marketing bootcamp, which is a 12 month marketing bootcamp for advisors. If you think about it, it's the most scalable way to bring marketing expertise to advisors. So video, 
podcasting, uh, a strategy, like how to optimize all your digital channels, YouTube, all the things, 12 month coaching program. And then our Amplify podcast. So for advisors who have a podcast, but they don't know how to actually generate clients from it, we've got a solution for that. And then FICOM Studio is very near and dear to my heart. It is the most creative thing that we do. When we have firms come to us and they have a business problem, but they don't know how to solve it. So they need a creative solution for it. So they come in, they say, this is my problem. Can you come up with a solution? And so I get the opportunity to concept creative solutions to solve their business problems. So those are the three things that I run at FICOM and just have loved uh, really developing. You know, so so we're going to start with coaching and then we're going to go a little bit more uh, dive into to, to marketing. You Your approach is a different approach to coaching. Um, something that I hadn't really seen before, one, because of the scalability, but but it wasn't just that it was scalable, it was very impactful. How are you motivating hard-nosed, fiercely entrepreneurial advisors to change? You're fundamentally challenging the way people are thinking in everything that you guys do, uh, but how do you do that in the world of coaching? I think about it like this. And I'll, I'll, I'll try and be present with this because I think it's really important. And that is the story that I told you of things fell apart for me in terms of anxiety, of insomnia, of, I remember at the time, I didn't actually mention I had signed up to do an MBA at Pepperdine. And instead I actually chose to go and study yoga, which was like an outrageous decision at the time, but I was searching for more joy. And what it fundamentally comes down to right now is to be an effective, to be a, an effective marketer, let's say anyone can create a podcast, anyone can create a video, anyone can create social content. We all know that's true, but the only thing that really resonates is when you're being real. So, like I like I like authenticity sounds gimmicky because so many people like say it, but the truth of the the truth of the matter is we can tell when we're being sold to. We can also tell when people aren't speaking from firsthand experience. So when you're thinking about coaching, what are we actually coaching on is like, how do you show up in your marketing in a really authentic way? That's hard to do because what does it require? It sounds simple and it is simple, but it's not easy to do. It requires that you know who you are, which most people don't know because we've been told who we should be. And it also it also requires that you're confident and you're grounded in it, knowing that some people are going to like you and some people aren't going to like you. So when we're thinking about coaching it, we're really approaching it from uh, if you weren't here tomorrow and you didn't show up, what change in the world wouldn't happen? What impact wouldn't you be able to affect? And going back to my first job at Mercer Advisors, that really aligning people's values with their money, huge impact that you can have on that. Like what a powerful mechanism. So for advisors, what is your, the same question I was asking myself, what is my dharma? If you're a yogi and you understand that, what is my purpose? Like, and I do believe my purpose is to help people find their voice. So how do you find that authentic voice to fulfill upon your purpose? And I feel like we all have that inner voice inside of us, that inner like inkling, that discomfort when we're not authentic, that, that inner feeling that knowing that we're meant to be doing something very specific in this world, whatever it looks like. So through the vehicle of our work and for advisors, their businesses, how do they actually do that? Being able to be okay with that. I also want people to understand that it's not generally a light switch, right? I mean, you went through a whole process, Candace, right? In order to get to the point where you were feeling more and more comfortable in the Candace skin and you're continuously doing that, right? It's it's like a muscle that you have to continuously exercise. You can't stop doing yoga and then six, nine, 12 months later, think you're going to get back into those positions very quickly. It's something that you have to continue to hone. And you do that through this 12 month coaching program that you have. Uh, when it comes to the marketing side and, and, but, but when it comes to the coaching side, can you elaborate a little bit more? Cause what you just said, I can see how that's applicable from a marketing perspective, but how does that actually apply from like a practice management and advisor running their business perspective? 
Yeah. So I think a lot of advisors out in the world, they read, um, you know, a blog or Kitsa says you should podcast, or all of a sudden it's like, you need to be on Twitter or you need to do these five second videos on TikTok or whatever that is. Right. And so it can feel marketing can feel really overwhelming, especially for their businesses. They don't know where to start. And then if they're really proactive, they're gung ho, they might try to do millions of different things, spend money, and then start to feel like this is not really translating to new clients. I don't really think that I should be doing this. Like, what's the point and purpose in this? So what we do in the 12 month coaching program is first of all, help them identify their why, the change that they want to create, right? That's their marketing message. Your vision is your marketing message. So that's number one. Number two, get really clear on who are you creating this change for? So who is your target client? Who's your ideal client? But going beyond what most people do, which is just demographics and really understanding them from a psychographic perspective. What wakes them up in the middle of the night? Why would they want to work with you? So really connecting from the worldview. These two things sound really simple, really obvious, not easy to do. And then really understanding where's your highest and best use. So what we do and we coach on is what are the strengths that you have and what are the constraints? So if you are excellent at conversation, maybe a podcast is for you. If no, you're a, you are a written word is amazing for you. Maybe you're a blogger, but really starting to understand how do you create content or how do you connect with the types of clients that you seek to serve, embracing your strengths and constraints, being really targeted and focused so that your marketing is really targeted and focused and it actually drives results. So for 12 months, we're understanding who you're going after, what your marketing message is, the vehicle in which you're going to reach them. And then really, how do you build trust online in a way that's authentic, that's engaging, that adds value, that whoever is consuming your content or wherever they're seeing you, they understand who you are, the services you have, the value, and they're booking that first meeting with you and they're ready to work with you. There's no trust building in that first meeting because they already know they're ready to rock. So it has a digital first component. We really drive authenticity, but it's really about driving revenue. How do we help you get new clients? And each person's map is quite different. Well, we talk about the influence continuum, moving from people who you have to sell to, to build that trust in those first meetings, uh, to fans who are those people who come in pre-sold and who also are actively helping you market yourself more successfully. Uh, and everybody, I just kind of, kind of wanted to pause on that because what there's a reason why we're partnering with Viacom on, on a lot of different things in, in this year and many years to come is because we are entirely philosophically in line. Everything that you just heard Candace say from her story to the offering, to her journey, to what they believe, what they do for advisors like all of you, it's entirely in line with, with who we are as a, a company. And the interesting thing is, is you, you, it's going to sound really corny. Uh, you complete what we do. I was going to use the movie late, but I decided against it. Yeah. Uh, but that's the cool <laughs> thing about this, right? Is we know what we do well, and you guys know what you do well. And we just found out that we're like this, you know, two train tracks heading in the exact same direction. Uh, we want to do the same thing. We want to help advisors get their voice out in the marketplace and stop being the best kept secret by being their true authentic self. And when you are your true authentic self, you have no competition. Content is easier to create. You don't feel like you're, you're going home and you're feeling dirty or yucky because you know, you just, weren't yourself in that situation. And I, I love the fact that you guys have all of these wonderful systems built in place, which is actually what we're going to talk about in part two of the podcast. So part two of the podcast, everybody, and I want you guys to stay tuned. Uh, so part one, one uh, was when I actually interviewed Meg, which was super cool. We talked about PR and all that fun. I wanted everybody to have a chance to get to know you a little bit, Candace, to find out a little bit more about who you are and what makes you tick and really the, the beginnings of the offerings. And then this next one, uh, which is going to be actually episode three of this three-part mini series, we're going to dive in much more deeply on what you guys do at FICOM, you specifically and how you can help advisors uh, really focus and, and get their message out in the marketplace. So before we wrap up, my favorite question to ask is, uh, what should I have asked you that I didn't? What's your favorite podcast? <laughs> Ooh, I love that. All right, sister, what do you so, got? What's you know, I have our new school podcast. We've had you on that. So, and I just want to acknowledge that you said we're super aligned and that's why we're partnering. We feel the exact same way. So the love that you express for Viacom, thank you right back at you. Like we feel it the same way, but I, but what I love about podcasting, and I know we're going to talk about this more in the episode is you can podcast on anything. Right. And so one of my favorite podcasts, I've got two right now, which are really kind of different is one is called a little bit culty. Okay. So it's from people who have escaped cults and like, they talk about their experience. <laughs> 
Okay, but very wow. well done. The posts are just like so engaging and so interesting. And I, I don't even know real. I know how I found my way there, but I'm not quite sure. I could, but I just can't stop consuming it. Just really excellent job, right? Really fascinating. And then the second one is I was trying to look up the name, but it's an offshoot from On Being, and it's this Irish guy who reads poems. I think it's poetry unbound or something and he reads poems and then he talks about them and I just like love it to me it's like so uplifting and I love podcasting because that because you can talk about anything my wife's favorite podcast is movies to be buried with uh which is uh for, so there's a Ted Lasso, and uh, he plays Roy Kent, uh, and he has a podcast where he interviews all of these famous people and asks them uh, halfway through the podcast, he tells them that they die and they have to tell how they die. It's just, it's just a really, really, really fascinating. And it's really interesting how much you can learn from about somebody who you, again, feel like, you know, you've seen on the big screen or, or on the TV and you learn so much about them from from the movie specifically. All right, so Candace, uh, you know, stay tuned. Uh, we're going to be back in just a, a few minutes here. Okay. Uh, but this next episode, I want everybody to know is where we're going to be diving more into the the products and deliverables that we're partnering with uh, with Viacom directly. Now, one other thing that Candace said that I want all of you guys to focus on is. It, those those first couple of things. What is your vision and who are you talking to? I'm I'm paraphrasing what Candace was saying. When we do our influence readiness score, which is one of the things that we're launching here in 2023 that we're really excited about, is those are the first like two categories. And so many advisors don't have those two things figured out. And if you don't, you can't move on to the other five things that you need to do to accelerate your influence. So you know, sitting down, really writing that stuff out and asking yourself the right questions or allowing somebody like us to ask you those questions can make a huge difference. So for Candace and everybody at FICOM, this is Matt Haller, and we'll see you on the other side of the mic very soon. Thanks for listening to the Top Advisor Marketing Podcast brought to you by Proudmouth. If you want to know more about how you can be your own loud, visit us at proudmouth.com and sign up for the Pod Rocket Academy. Through courses and office hours led by professional podcast producers and digital marketers, you will learn everything you need to know to become the trusted subject matter expert you were meant to be.